So it turns out that activity is typically measured with a device which is called the Geiger-Muller counter. And so I'm going to draw this device for you. The device is pretty simple. It's a large tube. And the tube is connected to the ground. This will allow the tube to either get rid of charge or draw charge up as necessary. So we have a large tube. Inside the large tube there is a very thick wire. So these are wires that are connected to the very thick wire that runs through the center of the tube and then another one which is connected to the outer portion of the tube and this is a speaker. So what ultimately happens is they point this device at the radioactive source. So I would see that radiation is coming in from the left over here. Now what essentially has happened is that the case is earthed or grounded and this is a high voltage positive electrode. So, because this is a very high voltage positive electrode, there's an enormous potential difference between the tube on the outside and the wire on the inside. This typically is more than a thousand volts. Sometimes it could be as much as two or three or even four thousand volts. Potential difference between the wire in the center, and of course there's an insulator that makes sure that the wire does not touch the, um, excuse me, the metal tube on the outside. And so what ultimately happens is this is filled with a neutral gas. And because the gas is neutral, it doesn't do anything in this very high potential, this high voltage electric field that exists between the wire and the tube on the outside, the metal tube. So what happens is the radiation comes in, and as the radiation enters, it ionizes the gas. And what ionized essentially means is that it begins to separate the atoms from their electrons. Electrons are being ejected. Now because the electrons are being ejected, what we find is that when the electrons are separated, we find that the electrons very quickly, because of the high electric potential, they move towards the wire. The remaining portion, the atom, which is now taken on a positive charge, those guys move towards the the case. So every time that a particle passes through here, ions are created. The negative electrons travel towards the wire where they travel down the wire and out to the speaker and the positive ions drift in the opposite direction towards the the earthed outer casing and as they touch the outer casing they pull electrons up through the through the ground wire and then re-neutralize themselves so they go right back to being a neutral gas. In the meantime the electrons travel down through the wire out through here into the speaker where it makes an audible click. So each time that the gas becomes ionized a small current leaves the tube and that creates a click. If you've ever seen a Geiger counter then you've heard the clicking sound that it makes and of course it's a, it's a very simple rule you would like to not hear very many clicks because more clicks means that you're being exposed to more radiation. Now there's, there's a little bit of a problem with the Geiger counter and that is that unfortunately there's a little bit of a lag time because the ions have to, after they become ionized, they actually have to move physically up to the tube where they'll pick up an electron from the ground or from the earth wire and become neutral again. Now when they become neutral again, they're ready for the next particle to come through and to re-ionize them. 
but while they are charged, they're not capable of giving up any more electrons. So when the particle comes through, the gas becomes ionized inside the tube and it's not ready to accept another particle. So what needs to happen is the electrons need to leave through the wire, the ions need to move up all along the tube here, they're moving up to the tube, and they're picking up an electron to become neutral. So there's a certain lag time. It takes a little bit of time for it to respond and be ready for the next particle to come in. So unfortunately, if there's a large amount of radiation, that you may find that not all of the particles are getting counted. So that is to say, if two particles come through at the exact same time, the detector only knows that something came through. It's not sure how many of them. I hear an audible click, but the click is no louder or no different in any way. So I can't really tell that two particles went through it would simply seem like one particle went through. So that's a little bit of a difficulty with the Geiger counter. They're very responsive. They tend to be able to accept the next particle within a thousandth of a second or maybe even a little bit better. But the fact of the matter is that if there's too much radiation, your counts will always be low because the counter is not capable of distinguishing if two particles came through or only one particle came through. And that's just the reality. It's, it's not an expensive device. Actually, it's relatively inexpensive to produce, and so this is why they're so popular for measuring radiation. But there are better devices that you don't need to, to worry about, but better devices that are a little bit more responsive, but these are what typically people use because they're just so easy to, to produce. They produce an audible click, or you could have this connected to a computer or an electronic circuit that would be counting the number of particles that are traveling through it. So instead of just clicking, it actually gives you a count, and of course that count corresponds to the a level of activity. So if I count 10 clicks per second, I would say I had an activity of 10 becquerels, or that is to say 10 decays per second. So this is known as the Geiger-Muller counter, or just simply the Geiger counter.